Hi, this is Wayne Zell and welcome to Blueprint for Wealth, your fast paced video cast that's designed to help you realize your personal dreams of wealth and freedom. And it features entrepreneurs and educational moments that are of interest to our listeners who are mostly entrepreneurs. And today I have an entrepreneur guest today, and that is Jen Dalton. Welcome to the show, Jen. Thanks for being on Blueprint for Wealth. Thank you, Wayne, for having me. I'm excited to be here. We're excited to have you. I, I met Jen recently. We're part of a group uh, that is a Vistage Trusted Advisor group, and we all have to reveal our personal secrets. So I learned a lot about Jen, and she comes from a family of entrepreneurs and is from Georgia originally. Tell us a little bit about your background. Growing up in Georgia is an experience in the all in of itself, um, <laughs> but my parents were entrepreneurs in the retail business. And I think my husband was very glad because they were in the shoe business. So nothing better than, you know, being married to someone who the shoes at least come at a discount, maybe. Uh, but growing up, I was an only child. So my parents would take me to every business dinner, the shoe shows to, to buy shoes, jewelry to buy jewelry. And so I really had an interesting experience getting to know people, uh, getting to understand business early on. I was very fortunate. I also think they used me for child labor. Let's be clear. I did lots of inventory moving in the stock room, all kinds of stuff. But it, it really gave me a sense of employees, customers, knowing your customer, knowing your audience. Uh, my dad would always tell me, pick out the shoe that you think we should buy. And I'd be like, this one. And he'd be like, that is not going to sell in Georgia. So <laughs> let's pick a different one, right? Maybe in New York City. That's right. Maybe in New York City. All so right. I think for me, it was a beautiful hands-on learning experience. I was in retail too growing up. My parents were in the jewelry business and uh, I learned, you know, I was part of that child labor uh, <laughs> abuse, let's yeah. call it abuse, <laughs> but you learn a lot about business, just working around people that are in business and dealing with customers and stuff. Did you yeah. actually sell shoes in the store? I would. I mean, um, by the time I got into high school, I would sell some in the store, but I was also waiting tables, which is one of my favorite jobs. Also getting to know people, getting yeah. to know familiar faces in a small town. Um, some sure. of them are Georgia. So it's the second biggest CSRA in Georgia, but it's still a small town. Um, but yeah, I think learning how at a young age to be confident and to be able to sell or to be able to solve a problem or to be able to work 10 hour days. Uh, my parents showed a lot of work ethic. I'm sure for you, your family showed a ton of work ethic. And that was huge and very formative for me. Yeah, this I'm time sure of year, particularly, oh. this was the big season yes. for, for what we did. And we were seven days a week. Yes. Um, but I'm sure, you know, the same thing, you know, people are shopping and they want to get their Christmas presents or their Hanukkah presents or whatever presents they want to get. And this is the time of year when people do it. So I also remember that you told us that you were at Cap One at one point in time. What were you doing there? So I studied HR and international management in college. And uh, I also did crew in high school. So I really had a, an early stage, I would say, idea of coaching and working with people. And so my first job at Cap One was actually in their check processing division in Richmond. So it was operations. And my job was to motivate people to key in check amounts. <laughs> and so that's a pretty, that's a pretty tough first job. I was for, I was 22 and there were 24 people. And so how um, did you motivate people to input check data? Type faster. No, um, <laughs> you really have to get to know people and understand their career goals and how are you coaching them in addition to that? so that they feel seen, valued, and heard. Um, and we would have competitions and try to make it as fun as possible. Um, obviously, you can hit goals and you can celebrate, right? Recognition is huge. I think that's something that we need to see more of. If you ask most people, they don't feel recognized enough. And it's one of the easiest things you can do to help people feel valued and want to be a part of a team and understand why is this meaningful? You know, because you're doing this job, it does add up to a bigger picture. And you went to Georgetown for an executive MBA. Is that correct? I did. I was a glutton for punishment. I love Georgetown. I went there undergraduate as well. And then I went back and got my exec MBA. And that was really the pivotal point where I, I launched my business after that. 
So that is what inspired you to launch Brand Mirror. First of all, the name is fascinating. What does it imply? Why did you pick that name? Uh, nothing that, you know, four best friends and four bottles of wine can't help you come up with. But there was a process to it. I, I found uh, four of my girlfriends who were all in branding and marketing. And we really talked about what do I want this business to be about? Why am I doing this? And many of my classmates, while I was at Georgetown, you know, we all went back to get our exec MBA, paid a lot of money and wanted to level up our career. For many people, that would mean meaning going from VP to the C-suite or something like that, or leaving military, transitioning into private sector, public sector mm -hmm. either. So I really wanted to think about, you know, brand is about a promise. What are our promises that we make um, that we're committing to someone? If you work with us or buy this service or product, here's what you should expect. And mirror was really about reflection. I think that self-reflection is critical, knowing who you are, your values, what matters to you, what's the impact you're trying to make, how are you different, where do you add value, where do you create value. And so Brand Mirror uh, really came out of that brainstorming session of branding and reflection and all these things, because I think before you can really impact others in the biggest way possible, you have to know who you are and what you stand for and what matters. So to emphasize, it's not about bragging about yourself. It's about providing information to people so that they know what your value proposition is, right? That's right. I love um, lots of fun phrases. So personal branding is not personal bragging. If you're bragging, you're doing it wrong. And the phrase I am probably known for the most is telepathy is not a strategy. Many people are wonderful and we will never know because they feel like if they talk about their accomplishments, it's bragging. And the reality is unless we can tell people what we're good at, they will not know. And so we want to find a way to tell your story that's meaningful, that's accurate, uh, and that's clear. You know, if, if I said, hey, Wayne, let's go to lunch. And you're like, okay, well, what do you, what do you like to eat? I don't know. Pick anywhere. That's not helpful. If I told you, Wayne, I love North Italia in Reston, Virginia. It's not far away. Let's meet there. That's much easier. And the same is true for people. If you tell your story and you say, I'm really good at transforming organizations where the execution hasn't been there, but they've got great strategy, but they're missing how to use technology to bring their strategy to life and execute on that. Great. I know how you can help me. And so the clearer we are on where we add value, it's so much easier for people to know, oh, I should hire you or I should be a partner with you, et cetera. So yes, definitely not bragging. It's definitely knowing the promises that you want to offer and make to people if they decide to work with you. What has been the greatest challenge that you faced with a client when it comes to personal branding? There's a short answer, which, and then I'll give you a little bit of a longer answer. Sure. I did have one client who wanted me to fabricate his story more, embellish. Let's use embellish. Okay. Um, I don't do that. <laughs> like, I have lots of integrity. We're going to tell your story. We'll tell it the best way we can. And if you're missing evidence, then we'll find a way to help build that evidence, whether it's okay. through volunteer work or whatever. But I, I definitely believe that your story has to be authentic, has to be true, has to be genuine. Some people find that hard because you you still want to get paid and have business, but that, that's an easy one for me. I think harder ones are where um, people have to let you have, people have to be open to sharing who they are. You have to be vulnerable. When I get to know people through our work, I really want to know who they are. And sometimes when you're uncovering what people are good at or maybe what they're not good at. Right. One of the books I've written is called Listen. It's about difficult conversations. And so I definitely have those with clients where it's talking about, hey, I asked your employees how they perceive you. Here are some of the words and phrases we got back. These were really exciting. And these are exciting because they tell us where to focus and work. But my client might be like, wow, I didn't know that they saw me that way. And so just as we're building up someone's confidence in who they are, because you can be surprised how insecure leaders can be. Um, but owning up to that and, and really thinking about, okay, here's where I'm at. Here's how we move forward. 
to me, it's always about moving forward. You know, you can look back and reflect and learn, but it's about now what? Now what do we do next um, huh. to really make an improvement? Let's say I've got a, a person that is an entrepreneur just starting out, though, and they don't they haven't really defined what their value proposition is or they haven't earned the trust of others to be able to articulate that, you know, they are the best at this or that. Mm. How do you build that confidence, self-confidence? How do you build a brand from someone who is just starting out? Such a great topic. I, I do a lot of mentoring and work with students uh, and even professionals. You know, I just had a call recently with someone who's transitioning industries. They can bring operational expertise, but they still have to learn about that industry. Um, what I find, you can build your brand at any time. You don't want to build your brand when you need it. You want to build your brand before you need it. So okay. if you're a student or if you're transitioning industries or you're, let's say you're transitioning from working for someone to launching a business, it's okay to let people know where you're at on that journey. You know, when Bitcoin first came out or as you think about AI, everybody had to start somewhere. So if you're showing, hey, I've been to these five conferences. These were the amazing speakers. Here's where some of the trends they brought up for AI. You can write about that. You're not saying you're the expert. You're saying you care enough to pay attention to what's happening and you're fully invested in learning more. To me, that speaks volumes. It may not mean that you're the AI expert, but I know you're out there trying to be smarter about it. Obviously, if you're going, and there are people who do this, especially during the pandemic, if you're going from marketing to launching a restaurant, because that's your passion, hopefully you're really good at cooking, right? <laughs> hopefully. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> Restaurants are, almost, um, I think, maybe worse than retail because they're hard. <laughs> So if you have a good team, you can make that transition, but you do have to build up evidence if you want people to invest in you. So maybe you start out with a, um, a pop-up in the weekend you know, market and you do that for six months and you get feedback. What dishes are good? What do you think? And you start to build a following. Some people want to have the answer tomorrow or be at their destination tomorrow. The reality is sometimes the best way to get there is just step by step. Do focus groups, ask questions, see what people think, see what's missing. Um, we don't have to do it on our own. There are right. lots of people who we need to help us, you know, bring that vision to life. But I think when you're in transition and you're trying to build or adjust your personal brand, it takes a lot of, of legwork um, digitally online, but also in person mm -hmm. to change perceptions. Do you help clients you with their digital online presence? I do. LinkedIn is one of my favorite platforms. Um, it's a fascinating platform. Most people think, oh, that's just for the job search. About 60% of the content on LinkedIn is all about business development, thought leadership, conversations, discussions. And so one, if you want to do research, it's a fantastic place to go. Um, two, if you want to grow your network and reach out, which takes some courage, uh, it's a great place to do that. I was talking to someone who's in life insurance and I said, yeah, let's talk about how you use search and how you use it well and effectively on LinkedIn. And literally two hours later, they texted me. They're like, oh my gosh, I did what you said. I called three people and now we have a follow-up phone call with each of them. So you help them with a strategy in their business, not just branding, because branding really evolves from a strategy and a business plan, right? I think business strategy and brand strategy go hand in hand. You really can't separate them. A lot of people think about brand as a name, a logo, colors, fonts. Right. Uh, right. Brand is so much more than that. It's who's your target audience? How are you going to make money? How are you going to be compelling? What's your message? It's all of those things. And so, yes, when I talk with people about their brand, personal brand, which for an entrepreneur probably becomes your company brand, um, if you want to sell your business later, that's a whole other conversation about what do you name your business, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they really do go hand in hand. I know that you've done a lot of branding for yourself. Um, you've done a lot of speaking. You're a Vistage speaker. Tell us about the experience at the White House, because I knew that uh, I heard that you had spoken at the White House at one point, which is kind of exciting. It's very exciting. Um, it was a very interesting time. It was before the election of Trump. 
and Hillary having their face off, right? And so you have Obama leading into that transition. And so many people, and if you're in the DC area, you know that when a new party comes in, the old party goes out and there's all kinds of transitions, et cetera. Well, supposedly the old party goes out, but it doesn't supposedly. always work that way so That's easily. That's true. Well, and if the same party stays in power, Democrat, <laughs> Democrat, Republican, Republican, right. there's lots of musical chairs. People that were in the White House go here. People that are in the State Department go here, et cetera. Okay. But when we have that, where a lot of people thought Hillary would win, and then they realized that that was not the case, um, that's actually after right after that election, two, two or three weeks later, I was asked to come in and speak. And so a lot of the people in the room were from all over, Department of Education, State Department, you name it. They were there because now all of a sudden they had to think about their personal brand, their online presence, LinkedIn, their resume. How do I tell my story? I've got to go find a job right now. I had one lined up, but now that this other party won, uh, it's not lined up anymore. So it was a really, it was hard, right, to have all of these people all of a sudden now need to change and pivot and do something different. So it was very humbling. And uh, I mean, you know, you walk through the executive office and, and everything, and you're just, it's overwhelming. It's beautiful. It's the center of our country. Um, from a, How did you get the 